Your home and your heating and air system, a guide on what to look for when replacing your home and heating and air system. It's presented by me, Mitchell Bailey. Here's a list of my credentials. Um, I only have a high school education, but I have been doing this for over uh, 40 years. And uh, I think I'm pretty well versed in it, and I have enough education so I can talk reasonably intelligently about it. Let's start with heat flow. The second law of thermodynamics, heat flows from a hotter body to a colder one. That means when it's hot outside the and cold and cooler inside, that the heat's going to try to flow from the outside to the inside, as in the summertime. Now, the hotter it is outside, the faster this heat transfer will try to take place. Uh, one way to slow it down is to add insulation. More insulation will slow down the heat transfer. In relation to the structure, we do call this uh, cooling loads, and if it's colder outside than inside, we call that a heating load. There's types of cooling loads. We have external loads, which is just the temperature outside and the difference of the temperature. When it's 105 outside, there's a higher cooling load needed than when it's 75. Uh, we also have solar heat gains, which is the direct sunlight that travels through the windows. Uh, that sunlight uh, beating through west-facing and south-facing glazing adds uh, heat to the house, which is a load that we have to remove. Relative humidity. Now, humidity levels in this part of California are not significant enough to where it's usually a problem. In other parts of the country, such as Louisiana and down south and back east, High humidity levels cause the people there to run their air conditioner when it's only 80 degrees because they need to get the humidity out. It's just too too moist in the air, and, and the first thing an air conditioner does is it removes humidity. Now, as for infiltration, air leaks in the home. That's that's basically what it is. is it's holes in your house. It's the uh, uh, weather stripping that's falling apart. It's the windows leaking air. It's holes around... Uh, plugs and light switches. Um, the biggest air leaks uh, and the most, uh, the most egregious are usually a uh, can light or, or recessed lighting. They are terrible for uh, infiltration and they're just like a hole in your house that allows heat in in the summertime and heat out in the wintertime. Internal loads. These are appliances, lights, people. Uh, doesn't matter uh, what kind of uh, load it is. But there are loads that are inside of the house. Uh, if you're running your stove, if you're washing clothes, uh, even the lights and uh, people themselves. We generate about 300 BTUs an hour that the unit has to take out that's being produced inside the structure. Uh, so on a hot day, uh, uh, we also have to add those loads back into uh, what we need to remove. Duct thermal gains, ducts and hot attics. Hotter the attic, the uh, 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 if your ducts are located in that space, the more heat gain it will get. You could have air coming out of uh, the unit at 50 degrees, and by the time it reaches the register, uh, it's gained 3 to 5 degrees. That's quite a, a lot of heat added to it, and if you can slow that down, that's that's a good thing too. Now we also got duct leakage. Duct leakage, it, it's also considered part of the infiltration. It's holes in your ductwork that leaks to the outside. And uh, duct leakage is exasperated when the unit's running because it, it pressurizes the ductwork. So it, it'll pool air from outside a hot attic if you've got a return air leak. And if you've got a supply air leak, it'll blow cool air into the attic. And neither one's a good thing, but uh, uh, that's part of infiltration. And it's usually one of the easiest things to fix on the infiltration. You don't have to do a lot to do it. A cooling load analogy. Imagine that your home is a boat and your boat leaks water. That water, if we, if we make an analogy that the water is actually the heat from outside and that your home is the boat, then uh, uh, we, can, we can imagine the heat coming in and the air conditioner having to take that heat out. Because the air conditioners don't cool. They don't cool. They remove heat. They soak up the heat inside and they squeeze it outside or they bucket the heat from inside the home to the outside much like you'd bucket you'd use on a boat to bail the water out. The leaks also represent the amount of insulation you have. If you have a lot of uh, insulation you have very slow leaks into the boat and also represents in infiltration. The infiltration being the holes in the boat which actually holes in your boat or your home 
and that we they let uh, water in on your boat, but it'll be uh, heat in on your uh, on your home. You have to plug the holes before you can bail the boat. It's just plain and simple. If you don't seal those up, it doesn't any good, do any good to keep bailing and bailing and bailing. You're just going to be playing catch up all the time. So just like the bucket, the air conditioner will bail out what comes in from these leaks. If you plug up the leaks, the infiltration, and slow down any of the other leaks with insulation, you will work less to bail out to keep the water. And your air conditioner would work less to bail out the heat. Now about the envelope and the structure. Your air conditioning system works best if your home is well sealed and insulated. Otherwise, you might as well have no walls at all. And uh, But to kind of determine what you need, we do what we call a load calculation. Every home deserves one. It determines the correct size of the air conditioning along with other components of the structure so we can tell uh, what needs to be done. If the R value of the attic insulation is low, we can add attic insulation and you can see more savings. In fact, the state of California requires a load calculation to be performed when you're replacing your system. Yet most contractors do not do one. And mostly it's because they don't know how or they think it's a waste of time. And even when it is done, many of these contractors ignore them and replace the unit with the same size, which is the worst thing you could do. The load calculation will tell you if your current air is too large for your home and whether your ductwork is too small. California Energy Commission studies show that over 90% of air conditioners are oversized for most homes. And while the ductwork is undersized, what this means is that your undersized ductwork reduces the capacity of the air conditioner. And the air conditioner is oversized, so it even gets more exacerbated. It results in high energy bills and comfortable homes. So before you're replacing your equipment, a load calculus should be performed to identify problems with ductwork problems with your insulation and infiltration in your structure and proper size of the equipment. And there's two types of load calculations. There's a block load calculation. It's a simple, quick, easy load calculation that we can do by just measuring the outside of the house and we measure the windows and the doors and how the house faces. And we plug in all, you know, the R value of the walls and, and of the attic and the uh, uh, U value of the windows and the SGHC and we come up with a number that uh, gives us the size of the air conditioner, gives us the BTUs that we need to need for cooling the structure. But the, a better way to do it is a room-to-room -room load calculation. And the room-to-room -room will take into account the loads coming into each of the rooms in the home and it'll give you, us the volume of air needed to provide cooling for each of these rooms. And we, ref, we prefer a room-to-room -room over a block load because it provides us the detailed information of the air needed to, that we need to deliver to each room so we can size the ductwork accurately. And the room to room takes into account, you know, the, the movement of the sun. It takes into account in the morning the sun starts out, it rises in the uh, east and it sets in the west. So in the, in the morning, uh, east facing rooms will have more loads. In the afternoon they have less and then there's more loads in the west facing rooms when it's the hottest. So that it takes all that into account. And it gives us accurate numbers so that we can design the ductwork to fit that room so it has the right size duct. <clears throat> well, don't you want an oversized air conditioner for the hottest days? And to most people it makes sense to purchase an oversized air conditioner so that they can turn it on and cool off the home in the shortest amount of time or when extreme temperatures happen. Although this sounds logical and is the way most homes over the last 40 years have been done, it's totally wrong. Totally wrong. Bigger is not better. An oversized air conditioner will cost much more to run than a properly sized air conditioner due to short cycling. In addition, the home will be less comfortable. In fact, the savings realized using a properly sized air conditioner and duct design can be as much as one half the cost to run as compared to installing a typical rule of thumb size of an air conditioner. The properly sized equipment will provide you better comfort throughout the home, in addition to taking into account the glazing, infiltration, insulation, the energy savings, and comfort level increase, as these factors are also addressed. Okay, we've done a load calculation. What do we do next? Now we look at the ducts to determine if they are sized correctly. If the ducts are too small, and they almost always are, then the static pressure will be too high to deliver the required airflow. Well, wait a second. What's static? Let me explain what static pressure is. Static pressure is a force exerted on the ducts from the blower pushing air through them. As we try to increase the air delivered through the ductwork, then the pressure also increases inside the ducts. If the ducts are not increased in size, then the static pressure is 
de decreases uh, increases to the point that less and less air is delivered. 99% of all residential systems use a static pressure of 0.05 inches of water column. Water column is just a measurement. It's, a, it's how much uh, pressure it takes to move a column of water up a half of an inch. And uh, to give you an example, your gas pressure going to your furnace runs at about 3.5 inches of water column. So 0.5 inches is pretty darn low. Uh, so we got to move air, and, and, and we use this in all our calculations. And the amount of air that be delivered will be reduced, which will directly affect the amount of cooling the unit can provide. Almost all air conditioners are designed to deliver 400 cubic feet of air per minute per ton of cooling. Now, a ton of cooling equals 12,000 BTUs. Uh, kind of example of what that works out to is if we, we have uh, three tons of cooling, it would be 36,000 BTUs, but that would require 1,200 cubic feet of air. 3 times 400 equals 1,200. And that's at a half inch water column. So we can go back to the equipment manufacturer specifications and determine the amount of air removing by taking a static pressure readings and comparing them with the charts for the particular unit to determine how much air we are really delivering. And studies have shown that in most cases we find that the system only delivers about 57% of capacity due to high static pressures. When we have a room-to-room -room load calculation, we can then accurately design this and size the ducts to accommodate the 0.5-inch water column and deliver the proper cooling to each room. Here's an example of a static pressure we took on an existing system. As you can see, the static pressure is running around 9 tenths of an inch of water column, 0.9 inches of water column. As you can see up here in the, uh, if you look at the chart right here, or if you look at the uh, uh, magnahelic. Now, this magnahelic gauge is a manometer. It reads uh, pressure in inches of water column and we hook it up to the uh, uh, one side of the blower and the other side of the blower and it gives us our total static and our total static on this unit is right at 0.9 inches. Now on our we were able to pull the equipment that this person had in their house and we were able to pull the chart on it and we could look it up and this particular unit right here it's, it's, it's this unit right here and it's running on high blower speed and we were able to run across here and we found that at a half inch of static is what we're shooting for they should be getting 1661 CFM well that's not where we're getting because we're at 0 0.9 but the chart only goes to 0 0.8 so we couldn't we can't extrapolate we don't even know what it's delivering but we know at 0 0.8 it would give you 1275 CFM so we know we're getting less than that but we took and we said down here let's do the math so 1,275 CFM divided by 1,661 CFM looks, looks like we're only given, getting 77%, less than 77% capacity. So basically, these people are paying for a 4-ton air conditioner, and they're only getting 3 tons of cooling. In the prior example, we did a load calculation to determine that the air conditioner was oversized. So the three ton they were actually getting was close to what they needed. So they, they, they only needed three tons of cooling. They didn't need four tons. But one bad thing about reducing the airflow is the penalty and efficiency. The original equipment was rated at 10 SEER. Now, basically, that's just the number of efficiency that kind of equates to there's a calculation that we can do. Uh, based upon the kilowatt hours that you pay for electricity and the size of the unit and the area of where the house is located, area of runtime, we can determine how much it would cost to run that air conditioner approximately. It's an average. It's not exact, but it's just a number that you can throw around. So that 10 sear, we estimated the efficiency due to the reduced airflow was really around 6 sear. Again, we're 77% of capacity, but we're even less than that. So we estimated 6 in the sear range because there's, there's a huge penalty when we're not delivering enough air. This, in addition to paying for a 4-ton instead of a 3-ton all these years, 20 to be exact, after some simple calculations, we found that the customer was spending an extra $765 each season to cool his home, which doesn't sound like much till you multiply that by 20 to find that we have wasted over $15,000. We haven't even taken into consideration the improvements due to the ductwork, the better insulation, replacing the windows, infiltration, which would save even more money. But it is impossible to calculate these savings with any degree of accuracy. So we leave that out, number out, but you can know it's going to be a significant number also. Thank you for watching.